In the previous lecture we discussed the adrenergic agonist's characteristics, and we knew what are the catecholamines and non-catecholamines. And we also knew that they are classified according to their mechanism of action to direct acting, indirect acting and mixed action agonists. Today we'll continue and discuss the direct acting adrenergic agonists. As we already know the direct acting agonists bind to adrenergic receptors on effector organs, without interacting with the presynaptic neuron. They are widely used clinically. In two lectures we'll discuss, epinephrine, norepinephrine, isoproterenol, dopamine, dobutamine, phenoldopam, oxymtazolin, xylomtazolin, phenylephrine, clonidine, albuterol and terbitalin, somitrol and formiterol and merbigrin. Let's talk about epinephrine, norepinephrine and isoproterenol at the same time and make a simplified comparison for their actions, therapeutic uses, pharmacokinetics and adverse effects. The three of them are catecholamines as we already know. Epinephrine and norepinephrine or also known as adrenaline and noradrenaline respectively, are naturally occurring neurotransmitters, and isoproterenol or also known as isoprenaline is a synthetic compound. In the adrenal medulla, norepinephrine is methylated to produce epinephrine, which is stored in chromaffin cells along with norepinephrine. On stimulation, the adrenal medulla releases about 80% epinephrine and 20% norepinephrine directly to the blood. On the other hand, norepinephrine is the neurotransmitter of adrenergic nerves. Now let's talk about their actions in the body. Epinephrine interacts with both alpha and beta receptors. At low doses, beta effects predominate, that means vasodilation in skeletal muscles blood vessels, whereas at high doses, alpha effects predominate, which represent the vasoconstriction of the blood vessels. Epinephrine strengthens the contractility of the myocardium, and it also increases heart rate by acting on beta-1 receptors in the heart. Therefore, cardiac output increases. So, the myocardium will need more oxygen to work. Epinephrine activates beta-1 receptors in the kidney causing renin release, which is an enzyme involved in the production of a potent vasoconstrictor called angiotensin II. Epinephrine causes vasoconstriction in the skin, mucous membranes and viscera, by acting on alpha-1 receptors, which slightly increases peripheral resistance and it dilates vessels going to the liver and skeletal muscle by acting on beta-2 receptors, and that significantly decreases peripheral resistance, and the sum of that of course is a decrease in the peripheral resistance. Renal blood flow is also decreased. So, an increase in heart rate and a decrease in the peripheral resistance means an increase in systolic blood pressure, coupled with a slight decrease in diastolic blood pressure. What about norepinephrine? Well, it is supposed to work on alpha and beta receptors as it is the neurotransmitter of adrenergic nerves. But actually it works mostly on alpha receptors with slight effect on beta receptors. So we can conclude that norepinephrine causes an intense vasoconstriction by acting on alpha-1 receptors, while no compensatory vasodilation via beta-2 receptors on blood vessels supplying skeletal muscles, leading to a rise in peripheral resistance. Both systolic and diastolic blood pressures increase. To overcome this intense increase in the blood pressure, the body has to make an action, so what would it be? It is the baroreceptor reflex. When norepinephrine increases blood pressure, this stimulates the baroreceptors, inducing a rise in vagal activity, which is a parasympathetic activity. And that produces reflex bradycardia, accordingly blood pressure decreases. Isoproterenol, stimulates both beta-1 and beta-2 adrenergic receptors. It is rarely used therapeutically because of its non-selectivity. Its action on alpha receptors is insignificant. It produces intense stimulation of the heart upon acting on beta-1 receptors, just as epinephrine, it increases heart rate, contractility and cardiac output. It also causes vasodilatation of skeletal muscle blood vessels by acting on beta-2 receptors, with an insignificant effect on alpha receptors, they would result in a significant decrease in peripheral resistance. Because of its cardiac stimulatory action, it may increase systolic blood pressure slightly, 
and it greatly reduces diastolic blood pressure. Isoproterenol is a potent bronchodilator, by acting directly on bronchial smooth muscle beta-2 receptors. Back to epinephrine, it is also a powerful bronchodilator, by acting on beta-2 receptors in lungs. It also inhibits the release of allergy mediators such as histamine from mast cells. While norepinephrine has a very weak beta-2 activity, so it almost has no effect as a bronchodilator. Epinephrine has a significant hyperglycemic effect, as it increases glycogenolysis in the liver, by acting on beta-2 receptors, and it also increases the release of glucagon by acting on beta-2 receptors, and decreases the release of insulin by acting on alpha-2 receptors. Epinephrine also initiates lipolysis by acting on beta receptors of adipose tissue. After talking about their actions, let's talk about their therapeutic uses. Epinephrine is the primary drug used in the emergency treatment of respiratory conditions, and it can be a life-saving in these cases. So, it is the drug of choice in treatment of acute asthma and anaphylactic shock. And it is also the drug of choice for the treatment of type 1 hypersensitivity reactions, including anaphylaxis, in response to allergens. It may also be used to restore cardiac rhythm in patients with cardiac arrest. It is used with local anesthetic solutions to increase the duration of local anesthesia, by producing vasoconstriction at the site of injection. And this allows the local anesthetic to persist at the injection site for a longer time before being absorbed into the systemic circulation. And very weak solutions of epinephrine can also be applied topically to vasoconstrict mucous membranes and control oozing of capillary blood, such as nose bleeding. While norepinephrine is used to treat shock, because it increases vascular resistance, and that increases blood pressure. But it has no other clinically significant uses. The use of isoproterenol has largely been replaced with other drugs because of its non-selectivity, but it may be used as intravenous injection in case of cardiac arrest, heart block, and shock. And also in management of bronchospasm during anesthesia. Let's now talk about their pharmacokinetics. As all of them are catecholamines, so as we discussed in the previous lecture, they are rapidly metabolized by MAO and COMT, and their metabolites are excreted in urine. Epinephrine has a rapid onset and a brief duration of action. The preferred route is intramuscular, in the anterior thigh, due to rapid absorption. But in emergency cases, Epinephrine is given intravenously to provide the most rapid onset of action. It may also be given subcutaneously, by endotracheal tube, and by inhalation. Norepinephrine and isoproterenol are given intravenously for rapid onset of action. And finally the adverse effects. Epinephrine can produce adverse CNS effects that include anxiety, fear, tension, headache, and tremor. Epinephrine dose should be monitored with some patients, as it can't trigger cardiac arrhythmias, particularly if the patient is receiving digoxin. It may enhance cardiovascular actions in patients with hyperthyroidism, so the dose must be reduced in these individuals. It increases the release of endogenous stores of glucose. So in diabetic patients, dosages of insulin may have to be increased. It can also induce pulmonary edema. And some drug interactions may also be a problem. Inhalation anesthetics also sensitize the heart to the effects of epinephrine, which may lead to tachycardia. Non-selective beta blockers prevent vasodilatory effects of epinephrine on beta-2 receptors, leaving alpha receptor stimulation unopposed, which leads to increased peripheral resistance and increased blood pressure. Norepinephrine's adverse effects are similar to epinephrine. In addition, norepinephrine is a potent vasoconstrictor, so if leakage of drug from the vessel into tissue surrounding the injection site occurs, it can cause tissue necrosis. So it should not be administered in peripheral veins, if possible. Alpha receptor antagonists, which we'll discuss later, can be used to counteract the impaired circulation produced from norepinephrine. And finally, the adverse effects of isoproterenol are similar to those of epinephrine. So, as you see, you can remember these three drugs by, epinephrine, alpha and beta, norepinephrine, 
mostly alpha, and isoproterenol, mostly beta. If that video was useful for you, please leave like or comment. In the upcoming lecture we'll discuss the other direct acting adrenergic agonists, so subscribe if it's your first time here, and keep following us.